Welcome back for this week's technical. It's a sheepy one today. Go ahead, take a chance, click that subscribe button now. You never know you might learn something. As lambing in the UK starts to approach its March and April peak, the time will soon come on many farms to start a number of different husbandry procedures to get those lambs off to the best start possible. This typically includes docking the tails of lambs, ostensibly to reduce the risk of fly strike. And the same goes for many of the major sheep keeping nations of the world. Now as things stand, and everything being equal, I'm fairly confident to say that docking tails of lambs does generally reduce the risk of fly strike, and that's why we do it. So although there's overwhelming evidence that docking tails is a painful procedure, tail docking to a sensible length has often been considered a necessary evil for many flocks to avoid condemning a portion of the lamb crop every year to suffering with fly strike, which is for anyone who hasn't seen it, a particularly grim condition. But the million dollar question really is how short is sensible? And certainly in some countries, in some circles, there's been this fashion for excessively docked tails. And that's probably because visually it gives the impression of a fuller, meatier back end. Historically, it's probably been more of an issue in show sheep for that reason. But this style of docking has several drawbacks. Number one, the tail acts as an anchor for a lot of the muscles around that rear end. So when we take that tail really short, we remove that anchor and those sheep end up being more prone to rectal and vaginal prolapses. Taking the tail this short also leaves sensitive areas around that sheep's perineum exposed to extremes of weather, both frostbite and sunburn. Not typically an issue in the very mild United Kingdom, but it could certainly be the case in other major sheep producing regions, Australia, Canada, South America, and so on. It's generally accepted that the shorter the dock, the more painful the dock is, and that's probably because the tail gets thicker towards the base, and therefore you are removing more tissue. And finally, we might actually make cleanliness and fly strike worse. That's because the tail has a number of functions and that includes being able to swish feces and flies away from that rear end. So we can actually make this issue worse rather than better. The length to which tails tend to be docked varies on an individual, a local, a regional and a national basis according to trends, traditions and the legal standard. In the UK we tend to dock to a three fingers width length, crucially as set out in law so there's enough tail to cover the rectum and the vagina if she were a female sheep. In New Zealand, I think it's fair to say traditionally they've been docked shorter, but new rules came into effect in May 2022, and that uses the caudal fold as the cutoff for how short tails can be docked. The caudal fold are the flaps of skin which attach the underside of the lamb's tail to the lamb's body, and you mustn't dock shorter than that distal tip. In Australia, the Australian Veterinary Association uses a similar landmark. It's the the third palpable joint in the tail, you mustn't go above that. As for America, being America, it varies widely depending on which state you're in. Although it does seem like they've had this tradition in their show sheep of this ultra short docking. Not that there hasn't been pushback against that from various angles. The American Veterinary Medical Association and the American Association of Small Ruminant Practitioners support the same caudal fold method that you'd expect to see in New Zealand. And very interestingly, in much of Europe, including some of Britain's most important customers for sheep meat, docking either isn't permitted at all or is only permitted in very select cases. There are also differences in the age at which animals can be docked and by which methods and who can do it and the pain relief that should be provided. In the UK, although a number of different methods are allowed, the rubber ring method is by far and away the most common, and that has an upper age limit of seven days. By any other method, an anaesthetic must be used. Compare that to New Zealand, where hot iron tail docking is by far more common, although people can still use rubber rings. Legally, under the new standards, this can be done up to six months of age, although in practice, most are done much, much, much sooner. If they are done after six months, then it has to be done by a vet and it has to be done with anaesthetic. In Australia, it seems to be a three month upper limit and as for America, again, things vary widely by state. So I suppose you could look at it in two different ways. You could say, well, things are quite different across the board in different countries, how does that work? Or 
you could see what are the common themes because there are some common themes coming through a general push to do lambs younger and younger although not younger than 12 hours old because that might interfere with their colostrum feeding docking to a moderate tail length not too long not too short and increasing requirements for pain relief whether that is local anesthetic a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or both and actually especially in the UK a lot of the push isn't coming from the legal standard it's coming from the farm assurance standards but I couldn't make this video and not mention the elephant in the room and that is the question should we be doing this at all could we tweak our systems and our sheep so we don't have to dock their tails some farmers you may have come across some yourself and as we've seen some countries entirely have done away with docking assuming that hasn't been an animal welfare disaster it seems like this idea has legs and if so the old argument about this trade-off being in the sheep's benefit seems to get less persuasive especially when you consider the same thing was said about mulesing now if you don't know what mulesing is it's a pretty nasty procedure Procedure. Again, it was done as a trade-off to reduce the risk of fly strike. It's a procedure by which the wrinkly skin around the lamb's rear end is removed entirely so it'll scar over and therefore nearly eliminate the risk of fly strike. It's clearly more extreme than docking and really deserves its own conversation. But guess what? When the general public found out more widely about it, how do you think they reacted? It was a massive win for some of the anti-farming animal rights groups. And once it's out in the open, I think it's fair to say it, it looks quite quite hard to defend. It's now banned in most countries, it's only a last resort thing in Australia. And guess what? We've made changes to the sheep through genetic selection and to management to reduce that need for mulesing. So consider this, if you stopped your average British person in the street, someone who bought lamb, who enjoyed eating it, would they know that most lambs in the UK have a portion of their tail removed? And how would they feel when they found out about it for the first time? Even if we can make the argument that it's for a good reason. Clearly it's less extreme but who's to say tail docking couldn't become the next mulesing as for how we could remove the need for tail docking watch this space for another technical however i think even the most enthusiastic supporters of this approach would concede before we can replace tail docking we need to reduce and refine it and these sorts of things using pain relief getting them done at the right age docking to a sensible length are going to be those reductions and refinements. I've stuck a load of links in the video description about this because it's a big, big topic. There's a fantastic article by three really great sheep vets in the UK. If you're a vet student, I highly recommend going and reading that. It's really interesting and very practically focused. If you're a farmer watching this, if you want the most up-to-date information, go to your vet because certainly if you are outside the UK or New Zealand, they'll be far more clued in than I am on your local laws and regulations. If you want to see a flock of sheep and a farmer that have moved beyond tail docking in the UK and learn a bit more about how they did that, just click this end card here. And if you want to learn about how lamb castration differs in the UK compared to New Zealand, click this end card here. Other than that, just the usual, if you want to click subscribe, leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you for the next one.